And now I look forward to Nancy sharing her comments on Shubhanaya Shuna. Good evening. Uh, thank you to the Art Canada Institute for its support in publishing the Canadian Online Art Book Project Program and for adding a living Inuk artist, Shuvanaya Shuna, to its prestigious roster of publications on significant Canadian artists. I am honored and delighted to be able to open a small window tonight on the incredible work of Shuvanaya Shuna. Shuvanai is one of the country's most talented and tenacious artists. She is also one of the most prolific, producing over 50 completed drawings and prints in 2015 alone. Before I discuss what makes Shuvanai's art Canadian, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of her life and career. Shuvanai was born in 1961 at the nursing station in Cape Dorset, which is now referred to as Kingite, the original name of the community. Shivanai's grandmother was Pitsilat Kashuna, who is also one of Canada's most renowned first generation Inuit artists and um, the Art Canada Institute has also published a book on her work. Uh, Pitsilak was the grandmother to many artists in Cape Dorset and has left a significant artistic legacy. These include her aunts, Maoriak, uh, Shubunai's aunts, Maoriak, Napachi uh, Pudugu, and her father, Kiowa Shuna, as well as many uh, artistic brothers and sisters, including Guta and Si. Shubunai's cousins are also artists. Here uh, we see Shubunai pictured with her uh, first cousin, the late Annie Pudugu, and her cousins, also an artist, Siasi Keneally. The familial bonds and relations continue to be strong support in the studios and encourage artists towards the studio program in Kingite. Shiva and I received no formal art training, but did attend school um, throughout most of high school. She honed her drawing skills by working alongside her elders in the studios at the West Baffin Eskimo Co-op. In this classic apprenticeship system, one learns by observation. Shuvanai's earliest works, dating as recently as 1993, were small black and white drawings of rocky tundra with scant vegetation, houses, and local landmarks. In the early 2000s, Shuva and I began to introduce color into her drawings, mostly through the use of colored pencil, which offered her more options. She began to apply bright, concentrated color in selected areas of each drawing, enhancing and punctuating her accomplished ink compositions. Many of Shuva and I's drawings reference traditional Inuit iconography from daily life to shamans and mythic figures such as uh, the sea goddess Sedna. But Shuvanai is best known for developing a highly personal iconography. She creates bold and often inexplicable images that are simultaneously disturbing and delightful, depicting hybrid creatures and dark fanciful landscapes. Shuvanai's sources are her vivid imagination and her environment, infused with her fasc fascination with horror films, comic books, and television. Shivanai has altered expectations of what Inuit art should look like by producing art that responds to the complicated impact of a century of colonial influence in the Arctic. Like her late cousin Annie Pudugu, Shivanai has repositioned expectations of Inuit art. She has broken with traditional forms of representation adopted by her previous generations and created works, um, and also created works with contemporary artists in the South and has benefited from the international reach of curators and dealers that support and promote her work. Shivanai's work has been shown nationally and internationally. Her drawing is featured in the important Fidon publication, Vitamin D2, New Perspectives in Drawing, where it sits comfortably among the highlights of the best of a new generation of international artists. 
Inuit art is constantly changing and adapting like the culture itself, and Shuvanai Ashuna's groundbreaking drawing is pivotal in this change. Now I'd like to turn um, to what makes Shuvanai Ashuna's art uniquely Canadian. I'd like to speak to three points, one being her Inuit heritage, two, her participation in the Kingite studios, and three, the fact is what is Shuvanai is what I would call a maker. As an Inuk um, artist, Shuvanai is part of the indigenous culture of Canada's north. She has lived in Kingite on the southern tip of Baffin Island her whole life. Although Inuit have made objects and tools since the Thule era, art making has, as it has become known, is fairly recent and due to in, in part to its timeliness coming to fruition at Canada's centennial in 1967. The images of bears and walrus, Inuit games and hunting scenes fueled Canada's sentiment for an untouched North that was uniquely ours. Many Canadians did and do still do see Inuit art as part of Canadian identity. One important part of the creation of what we now know as modern Inuit art is centered around the West Baffin Eskimo Cooperative in Kingite. Incorporated in 1959, this co cooperative effort was part of an accelerated change in the North's cultural production and the center of a vital arts and crafts program. The critical and commercial success of modern Inuit art rests on the foundation built during this time. Today's Shuvanite community is said to have more artists per capita than any other in Canada. It has the strongest and longest tradition of community-run cooperative art making in the Arctic. The art making arm of the co-op, known as Kingite Studios, is famous for its production of masterful prints, graphics, uh, carvings, and other types of Inuit art. The print studio continue, continuously experiments with etching, engraving, lithography, and silkscreen printing techniques. The studio has produced a collection of prints every year since 1959. Due to this st stability and the longevity of the co-op's management, four generations of Inuit artists have been able to develop and sell their art around the world. Shuvan and I began visiting the studios in the mid-1980s, where she has worked consistently developing her craft and learning from her elders and her peers. Art historian Heather Gluliorte describes contemporary work coming out of the North as expressions of resilience. Resilience is a trait of Canadian Inuit in general, and to see Inuit artwork as an expression of this resilience is to see art as fortifying the culture from within, rather than as a reaction to outside forces. This is true for Shuvanai, who works in relative isolation in the Kingite studios. Without intention, she has been part of a strong group of third generation artists who have altered expectations about what Inuit art should look like. Her drawings, although still a market driven product, have also become an avant garde practice. Shuvanai's art, although deeply her own, can also be seen as a practice that responds to the complicated impact of a century of colonial influence in the Arctic. For example, in the piece uh, Titanic, Nescopi, and Noah's Ark, Shuvanai references the Titanic, a ship whose disaster was made current for her in James Cameron's 1997 film of the same name, which is subsequently her favorite film. The Nescopi, a notorious supply ship that um, until it sank in 1947, delivered goods to the remote hamlet of Kingite and Noah's Ark from the Bible. These three ships are conflated in a single boat that chases a giant squid and Inuit fishermen. The past, present, and uncertain future of her home are included in this image, image's fantastical narrative. With works like Titanic, Nescopi, and Noah's Ark, Shuvanai has positioned Inuit art within the mainstream of contemporary art and Canada and internationally. Uh, just quickly to my last point as, um, uh, being a Canadian is also, I equate to being a maker. Shuvanai makes drawings and lots of them. One trait I have found in my years of curating Canadian artists that with some exceptions, of course, many Canadian artists like to make things. 
This perhaps can be credited to spending inordinate amount of time during the long winters in studios and basements across the country using your hands. Examples of this can be seen in many artists that have represented Canada across the globe, including Jeffrey Farmer, Janet Cardiff and George Miller, Marcel Zama, to name a very few, as well as many painters such as the ones we have seen tonight, not to mention the many Inuit carvers up in the north. The sheer hands-on industri industriousness and tactility of chauvinized practice reflects on this trend in Canadian art making. Chauvinized rich drawings stand the rigorous aesthetic scrutiny of the mainstream art world as she continuously produces drawings that are ambitious, personal, sometimes difficult, and informed. Works such as Earth Transformation engage the viewer in a conversation that posits Inuit art as further reaching than idealized representation of the Canadian North and as an art form with global import. While being deeply rooted in a Canadian tradition, Chauvenay has broken with forms of representation adopted by previous generations of Inuit artists, enthusiastically creating works that through her delightful imaginings challenge stereotypes about life and art making in the North. Thank you very much.